Hello, my friend. Welcome and thank you so much for watching. Maybe you're watching because you saw my TikTok video or maybe you're here because maybe you are a Buddhist and you're just kind of curious about why is this person an ex-Buddhist? Or maybe you're watching because you're a Christian and you're just so interested in how I came from such a different background. I was not raised in the church. Maybe that's why you're here. Well, anyway, whatever brought you here, it was the Holy Spirit. And God is speaking to you today. And so thank you so much for watching. And so, yes, if you haven't watched my one minute testimony video that just like blew up everywhere, it's so wild. I just literally recorded it at work on my lunch break. And then I didn't think it was going to get more than like a few hundred views. But then overnight, it went from zero to 350K. And then it just kept on blowing up. And that was all Jesus, guys. That was all him. Glory to God. And so, yes, I am so glad that that video is being shared and reposted and that people are sharing it. And I really pray that it would reach the Asian community, especially those who grew up Buddhist like me. So yes, guys, if you haven't watched that video yet, it is right here. But if you've already watched it, you could just skip past and continue to. I used to be a Buddhist for 20 years. For 20 years, I did it all. Those meditations, those chants, those going to the temples and bowing down to statues. Those things do not help you. I was praying to those statues, but they have eyes that cannot see and ears that cannot hear you. But when i turned to jesus after calling on every single greek god norse god whatever hindu god whatever nobody came and nobody came when i needed a god the most okay because i knew no one can heal my broken heart no one can heal me or take away my sins no drug could do that no alcohol can do that nothing in the world can do that and then when i called on jesus he came into my room that day that night he came into my room and he saved me from my sins he took away my burdens he washed me clean and i feel alive the testimony part so yes i was a buddhist for 20 years guys i was raised as a buddhist and i know being asian like there's a lot of other asian girls and guys out there who were raised as buddhist and they think oh because i'm asian i'm supposed to be a buddhist like a lot of them don't even really believe in buddha you know a lot of them don't even really believe in all those stuff they just say they're buddhist because they're asian but i'm here to tell you guys that you can break out of that matrix programming because those things are false guys buddhism is a false religion it is not real. It's not a real God, okay? There's only one true God who created the heavens and the earth and the only one who can give you the salvation that you long for, the freedom that you long for. And so if that's what you're looking for, if you're looking for truth and freedom for your heart, for your soul, purpose for your life, that can only be found in Jesus. There's only one name under heaven with which mankind can be saved. And that is the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, so this is what happened, guys. So I heard this verse when I was like eight years old. And the verse was this. It's in the Gospel of Matthew. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. And so when I heard that verse, I meditated on it like my whole life. Before I got saved, I was just meditating on it. I was like, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. I thought righteousness was like civil rights movement and holding those picket signs and being like, we need reform or blah, 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 or something like that, or protests. And I thought that was righteousness. But little did I know, I was really far from it. Righteousness is the merit of God. Righteousness is the merit that God gives. Not something that you make on your own. It is something that only God can give. 
And so I was trying to make my own merit because that was such a Buddhism thing. Buddhists, they believe no one can save you but yourself. They, it's very, very self-centered, guys. Like, that's the truth. Buddhism is very self-centered. It is all about yourself. It's all about saving yourself. It's all about fixing yourself. It's all about trying to be a better you so that you could reach and try to get others to be a better themselves. And then it just gets into a mess. And so a lot of Buddhists don't even follow the teachings of the original Buddha or Siddhartha. And so what happens is that it's just a mess. It's a mess of stuff. People just add in the sorts of witchcraft, like candles and rituals. And they're like, oh, you have to cut your hair and do this and cut your toenails and put it in a little flower thing and float it down a river. It's just the weirdest things, guys. They just mix all sorts of rituals. There's astral projecting. There's levitation and meditation stuff. It's all a mix of new age with some ancient witchcraft from like thousands of years ago. That's why my parents, when they heard that I converted to Christianity, and I don't consider it a conversion from one religion to another, more I just like broke out, you know, I broke out of this programming and I've come to know the truth. And so I stopped living a lie. And so, yeah, a lot of my ancestors from thousands of years, they just kept doing the same thing that was passed down. It was tradition passed down from one family to another. They're like, oh, at this new moon, you got to burn this incense. You got to make sacrifices to give to the spirits, blah. You got to have these household gods and bow down to the statue made of gold. It was all weird, guys. It was just passed down and nobody ever like questioned it except me. I question it. And that's when I started being led to come to know the truth. So if you're a Buddhist and you're watching this, maybe start questioning why your ancestors did what they did. And then you'd start to realize it's all a bunch of new age, mystical, and ancient ritual witchcraft stuff mixed together in a humble jumbo to try to make you do something to save yourself. But no, you cannot save yourself from your sins. You cannot. That's the truth. And God does not forget your sins. You mess up. God remembers. And that's why there is a judgment. And the judgment is after death. Okay? Some people get judged for their sins right away. And so Buddhists like to call it karma. But God calls it justice. But he's also not just a God of justice, he's also a God of mercy. So that's why he patiently waits for you, patiently waiting for you to repent of your sins. Because he doesn't want his children to perish and go to hell. That is not God's desire for anyone, for them to go to hell. He wants all his children to come back home into the refuge of his presence. That is heaven, the presence of God. And you could experience heaven right here on earth and up there for all eternity. All you have to do is repent of your sins and believe in the gospel of Jesus. That he, he being God in the flesh, lived that perfect life that we could not live. We couldn't do it. We messed up all the time. We could, if you're Asian, you totally understand. Like, we cannot even live up to the standards that our parents set for us, okay? We cannot even live up to those standards. Why do you think for a moment you could live up to the standards of Almighty God? His standards are perfect. You have to be perfect to get into heaven. Perfect as God himself. But guess what? That's impossible. So this is what God did. God became a man. To live that perfect life that you and me cannot live. And then he gave that life up for us on the cross. That's what atonement means. It's a trade. He gave his life for yours. The innocent dying for the guilty. The righteous dying for the unrighteous. And that's why Jesus bled on the cross. Because a person's life is in their blood. And he bled his whole life out. Every drop, every second of his life. He bled it out so that us... Us being found at the foot of the cross, 
may freely come and receive forgiveness of sins. No matter what your nationality, no matter what your skin color, your background, your history, you can come to the foot of the cross and receive forgiveness of sins because of what Jesus did. And Jesus didn't just remain dead, but he rose from the dead on the third day after he, after he conquered death, hell, and the grave. Why? So that he could purchase for you eternal life. So that you could spend an eternity walking with him all the days of your life and forever in heaven. And I promise you guys, every longing and desire of your heart can be found in the presence of God. And I remember the verse that found me. So I was having a broken heart also. That was what really led me to seek supernatural help. And so some of you watching might be suffering from a broken heart as well. Maybe you just thought, oh, time heals all. But I know that that trauma, that brokenness could still be in there because only Jesus heals. Time doesn't heal. Jesus does. And that's what he did for me. So in Psalm 147 verse 3, it says, He, Jesus, He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. So if you have a broken heart, if you have any trauma, any brokenness, anything from your history, anything you're suffering through right now, there's a lot of people who come and tell me, in Tava, I feel like I'm living in a daily hell. And I'm like, hey, the presence of God is the answer. Jesus is the answer. The only way into the bliss and satisfaction and amazing, amazingness of God's presence is to repent of your sins and receive Jesus. When you receive him, you will be clothed not with your own merit, but with the merit, the righteousness of God himself. God will clothe you with his righteousness and you will be able to stand before God as Jesus because he stood before God as you. He took upon himself our sin, our shame, our guilt. He wore those so that we could wear his righteousness. Do you guys see that? We are children of God. Some people say, oh, everybody is a child of God. No, not everybody. The gospel of John says very clearly, only those who believe in the name of Jesus shall have the right to become children of God who were born, not of the flesh, but born of the spirit. So that moment you come to Jesus, you will repent of your sins and you will be born again. Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire and you will finally come to know what perfect peace is. Jesus is the true Prince of Peace, not Buddha, Jesus is. He is the true Prince of Peace. Only the creator of the universe could give you peace. Because he created all things. He created you. He created your heart. He created you when you were in your mother's womb. Only Jesus could give you perfect peace. There's a lot of programs, counseling, other religious leaders out there that try to tell you, oh, we could give you peace if you do this, this, and this. We could give you peace if you do this for like something, something hours. No. What you want is not just peace. Not the peace that the world gives, which is temporary. You want a peace that lasts forever. And only Jesus could give you perfect peace. So come to him. That's why he's calling out to you today. Come to me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come to me, Jesus says. Come to me, all who are thirsty, and drink from the fountain of living water. Come to me. That's what Jesus is crying out. Come and drink freely of the waters of life. Yes. So if you're watching today and you haven't come to know Jesus, do not reject this free gift of salvation another day. But go to Jesus. Just go into your room, shut the door, cry out to Jesus and be like, Lord, if you're real, let me know. If you're, if you're real, show yourself to me. If you're real, give me a sign or something. Like, or just go to your room and repent of your sins and be like, Lord, um, I don't know you. I don't know much about you, but I've heard that you could heal the brokenhearted. That's me. That's me. I went to my room and I was like, Lord, I heard you could heal the brokenhearted. Here I am. So yes, just have a little bit of faith. 
go to your room even with all your doubts and all your confusion and you're like you don't need to be a bible expert to be saved you just need to have an ounce of faith a little bit of faith just go to your room and ask jesus lord i want to know you jesus i want to know you people talk about you all the time but i don't just want to hear about you i want to know you not just in here but in here i want to know that you're alive i want to know that you are a person not just an idea or a religion I want to know who you really are. And Jesus will reveal himself to you in a way that only you would understand because he knows you so intimately. He knows exactly what you need even before you ask him. But he loves to hear you ask him anyway because he says, your face is lovely and your voice is sweet. See, God wants to see your face. He wants to hear your voice. He loves you. He created you. He doesn't want you to perish. So come to him and receive Jesus today. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.